Welcome back to the election countdown, Nigeria. The countdown is indeed on. Is Nigeria ready for another national presidential election? It's 30 days to go. Campaigns are still going on strong, and the electorates are picking up the most valuable form of identity that will give them the power to choose who leads the nation as president for the next four to eight years. According to the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, the 2023 general election is an election for the young people in Nigeria. Today, on Election Countdown Nigeria, we will focus on youth participation on the polls as the D-Day draws closer. I am Olive Emodi. You are welcome to Election Countdown Nigeria on Breakfast Central. Welcome back. Now we're going to be highlighting certain conversations this morning uh, about youth participation in elections in Nigeria. Now, whilst while sharing a breakdown of voter registration and collection of permanent voter cards in Nigeria at his address at Chatham House in London, INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu said records on the ground showed that the election would be dominated by the Nigerian youth. Let's take a look at this. By young people, young Nigerians between the ages of 18 and 34. And then they are closely followed by 33.4 million or 35.75 percent middle aged voters between the ages of 35 and 49. Put together, these two categories constitute 75.39 percent of registered voters in Nigeria. So actually, the 2023 election is the election of the young people because they have the numbers. Even the majority of the PVCs collected actually are collected by young people. So out of the 93.4 million, 70.4 million registered voters are between the ages of 18 and 49. Already their PVCs, as I said, are available um, and are being collected. And the collection of the cards will end on the 29th of January. We have to end it because before the election, we'll publish, we'll publish the number of PVCs collected on polling unit by polling unit basis. So out of the 93.4 million registered voters, we have 70, I would say, yes, 70.4 million are young people. Are you among this as a young person watching this? What does this mean for you as a parent, a stakeholder, or even as a youth? Now let's break these numbers down. According to INEC, over 600,000 eligible voters collected their PVCs in Lagos alone within the last one month. Out of the 93.4 million registered voters in Nigeria, 37 million, that is 39%, are young people between the ages of 18 and 34. We still have further um, information about this. 33.4 million or 35.3% middle-aged voters between the ages of 35 and 49 follow up closely. We also have that the majority of the PVCs collected are collected by young people. Out of the 93.4 million, we have 70.4 million people who are joining us. So basically what we're saying to you is that the larger number of those who have collected their PVCs or who have even registered are young people. And if you look at this in comparison to the numbers from last uh, election cycle, last election cycle we had about, say, 84 million. But what we did see that we, was that we had 51.11% young people who had collected or who had registered for their PVCs. And on the day of elections, we had about 46% who showed up for the elections. So what does this mean as a young person in Nigeria? Uh, these are some of the conversations that we're going to be exploring this morning. And the roles that young people can take, especially, or the roles that they have to play as regards being a part of the election and ensuring that their mandate is being protected. Voter apathy is a conversation or a theme that we've seen in previous election cycles. Is that something that will be repeated in this election cycle? Or are more young people dogged enough, determined enough to see a change? We also want to be exploring uh, conversations as regards 
poverty, poverty in Nigeria. We see reports um, about how 66% of Nigerians are, have been recorded as multidimensionally poor. Now, what does this mean for the young people? You know, you set this against the backdrop of unemployment and uh, fuel scarcity and economic instability. Does this mean maybe that we would see more young people willing to sell their votes or are they angry enough to do what they need to do to see the change that is required? We're having a guest joining us shortly to attempt to answer some of these questions and we would like for you to also be a part of the conversation. Join us on Twitter at News Central TV. We'll be right back in a moment. My name is Tokwe Bilu and I will not sell my votes and I'm also imploring and begging the general member of the public not to also sell their votes for, for peanuts. Hi, my name is Ayanyenka Shegones Johnson. I won't sell my right, I won't sell my votes for any reason. Yeah, my name is Martins. Okay, I will not sell my vote. My vote is my right, my vote is my power. My name is Esther Ogunaike. My vote is my right. I can never say my vote. Okay, I am a Shade Oyedero. My vote is my right. I will never sell my vote. I don't go sell my vote. My vote is my right. Um, my right is my right. Don't sell your vote. Don't sell your right. Welcome back to Breakfast Central. This is, of course, still election countdown Nigeria, where we're having important conversations as we count down to the elections happening in less than a month. Now, several interest, interesting angles of the conversation to explore, like we just saw, was the Vox Pop, where young Nigerians were stating that they will not sell their vote. What exactly is the value of one vote? How important is your vote in the deciding of the elections? Over the years, some of the things that we've heard is young people stating that their votes were not important or their votes were not relevant. And the question that I would often ask is, if your vote is not as important or is as unimportant as you think it is, why then are politicians paying a lot of money to encourage you to sell your votes to them? I think these are some of the questions that we are asking. Also, as regards young people participating at the polls, how many of them would be willing to come out? Let's look again at the numbers. According to INEC, we have over 600,000 eligible voters collected their PVCs in Lagos alone within the last month. And that's, of course, because we have seen that there's been an increased awareness when it came to conversations about uh, voters and vote, voters' participation in the elections. Now, out of the 93.4 million registered voters in Nigeria, we have 37 million, that is, of course, 39%. They are young people between the ages of 18 and 34. Now, we, we have seen that there's been an awakening amongst young people, especially, some would say, it's, uh, related to the NSARS movement and how, after that, we've seen more Niger young Nigerians awake and determining that they want to change. 33.4 million or 35.3% middle age voters between the ages of 35 and 49 follow up closely. The majority of the PVCs collected are collected by young people. Now, out of the 93.4 million, 70.4 million registered voters are between the ages of 18 and 49. Now, the question is, are you amongst these voters? Are these numbers enough to cause the desired change that Nigeria needs? Also, we're counting down to the elections but unfortunately, many people still have not gotten their PVCs, and maybe not because of their own negligence. Some have blamed INEC. We'll be exploring these conversations shortly. I'm Oliver Modi, and this is Election Countdown Nigeria. Welcome back to Election Countdown Nigeria on Breakfast Central. Joining us this morning is political analyst Aziz Okwadri. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, before we went on the break, there was a video that played where we had several young Nigerians talking about how they will not sell their vote. But according to the Poverty Index in 2022, part of what we saw was that about 66 million Nigerians, if I'm correct, yes, 
are, 63 percent of Nigerians are living in poverty. Okay. They are multidimensionally poor. Mm -hmm. Do you have concerns maybe that young people might sell their votes? Or do you think that they are angry enough to do what needs to be done to get the desired change that Nigeria needs? Um, thank you very much for having me again. Um, and it's a great question. I think it's, it comes in two folds. There's a, there's a faction of young people that, unfortunately, they are in situations that aren't well off for them. They're in very, very rotten situations. Um, and if you look at the poverty of the land, if you look at the, the way that, that the land is, people are hungry. There is poverty out there, like you so rightly mentioned. So I, I sometimes think it's very difficult to tell this demographic of people not to sell their vote because, I mean, if you look at it, a lot of them have to eat at night. A lot of them have to eat in the morning. A lot of them have, you know, two, three wives, right. six, seven children at home. And at that particular moment in time, the only thing they can think about is what can they take back home to their family. And then you have another demographic of young people, which I'm glad this has, this has sprung. Um, that demographic of young people are the ones that are angry, the ones that know that this country should be better off, the ones that know that this country should be far ahead than where it is now. And they want to now come out and make sure that their vote, that make sure that their vote is casted, make sure that their voice is heard, and make sure that their vote is counted. So there's, there, there, are two, there are two sides of this thing, but I do think it's very, I mean, I've been to a lot of the grassroots communities, especially here in Etiosa, and I can assure you that people are hungry. Yeah. Um, right. so uh, I, this demographic of people that you talk about, the ones who are angry enough to want to change, who yeah. realize that it's not about selling their votes, who are probably... I mean, they're hungry, of course. There's, mm. we, we can't start to talk about the myriad of problems that the country faces. But let's talk about a group of these people who are enlightened enough to know the power of their votes, and these are students. Mm. Yes. Now, what we find is that um, students have, like, um, they have, according to INEC, we have, like, 40% of, or 40 million of the new registered voters that are students, right? And if INEC says that about 40 million of the newly registered voters are students, there's also recent reports, according to the Daily Sun, that about 3.5 million students will be disenfranchised, meaning that they will not be allowed to vote. vote. Why? We're not unaware of the challenges that ASU has experienced in the past months going back and forth with strikes. So a lot of them are in school at the moment, trying to catch up and make up for lost time. Is it maybe time for us to have conversations about schools and universities going on break? Because whilst they're in school, their mates are at home voting. Mm -hmm. 3.5 million is a large number of people to miss out on in the election. Yeah. I think you're definitely right. It's definitely time about us having a conversation of students being allowed to take a break, to go back to wherever they're registered to vote, to go and vote. Because you'll find that one thing that also happens is a lot of them will actually make that attempt to go and vote. Um, but in, in past years, what has happened is the 11th hour or you know the day before the election, the election is then postponed. Students then have to go back to school, and then it's then hard for you to find that same amount of students, that same level of students, to come back the following week or in two weeks to wherever they're registered to vote to make sure their vote is casted. So yeah, we definitely do definitely have to look at the, the, the option of having students go on a break, maybe for a week, maybe for a couple of weeks, maybe for a few days, during the time in which votes need to be cast. I mean, in several parts of the state, what we've even seen is that markets have been shut down. We talked about this in Asamba, for example. The Bogonogo market was shut down by the Delta State mm. government because a presidential campaign rally was, was about coming. to happen. Mm -hmm. And of course, there was a lot of money that was lost, about, I think, 65 million naira. I'm not quite sure now. But if markets can be shut down, certainly students can be allowed to go and become a part or exercise their right to vote because it is indeed their fundamental human right. Now, we'll take the conversation away from students this time to talk about another set of young people. And this, of course, will be the National Youth Service Corps members. Last year, we had the and then the INEC, rather, INEC chairperson, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, he did visit the acting DG of the NYSC. And part of the conversations were talking about how to make NYSC the ad hoc personnel who will be recruited to be a part of the election process, how to guarantee their safety and their welfare. He went further to state that it's impossible or it would be very difficult for INEC to do the elections without NNPC, of course, because they're introducing technology. Mm -hmm. These young people are very tech savvy, mm -hmm. and we need them not just for conducting the elections, but also for collation and transmission of data. Mm -hmm. How would you say that INEC and the government has fared so far in relation to the protection and the catering of NYSC ad hoc personnel 
And do you have trust that they'll be able to maintain the new promises that have been made to guarantee their welfare? Well, first of all, let's say, let, let me point out that this is the first time that INEC has spent this amount of money on an election. They've spent double the amount that they've ever taken um, from, from federal to, on, on this specific election. I think it's about 400 billion that they've spent on making sure that this election goes well. So INEC has a lot to make sure, you know, make sure that nothing goes wrong. But in, in regards to your specific question, I think security is going to be major and I think um, I, I mean, you can see the security challenges around the country already, um, specifically in the eastern part of the country and, the, and specifically in the northern part of the country as well. So I think INEC is going to have to do a lot to step up security to make sure that elections are run free and fair. Um, one of the major things during election is violence, whether, that's, um, whether that is um, ballot box you know, snatching or whether that is burning, burning you know, things at polling units. So INEC I are going to have to do a lot to make sure that security is stepped up for this election. But I think they're on the right path. I think they're on the right track. Absolutely. Um, to, to making sure that that goes well. I mean, if we, if we dial back to, let's say, the 2011 elections, there's been NYC members have faced, the, they've had to bear the brunt a lot of the time of mm. electoral violence. About uh, at least 10 of them died. At least 10 died during the 2011 elections. And then what we remember then was how President Goodluck Ibele, Jonathan, in commiserating with them, offered to give the families like 5 million naira each. Nah, nah. But then they're saying it's not about giving us this money. Ensure that the, the people who have even perpetrated this heinous act are brought to book. Uh, let's move away from NYC for a bit and talk about the inability of people to access their PVCs. Uh, there's a post by Williams Uchamba that I would like to make reference to. And what we've seen is a lot of young people have complained on social media about their inability to access uh, their PVCs, not for want of trying, but as they refer to it, the uh, failure of INEC. Williams Uchamba says, INEC, I hope you are ready for what is coming. People are coming out to get their, every day to get their PVC, and they are constantly being told that either their PVC is not ready or cannot be found. You can't disenfranchise people of their right and want a free and fair election. Sort this out now. If you look through the comments of that post, several chance. people sharing similar sentiments of how they go to the INEC offices. One said, you know, they applied in one state and then heard that their, their PVC was printed and sent to another state and it just doesn't make sense. How do you foresee that we, do you even foresee that this challenge will be surmounted and people would be able to get access to PVCs, especially because the deadline for collection is around the corner? Honestly, I'm not so confident in that. Um, I've been to PVC collection centers. I, I've sent volunteers to PVC collection centers. And what, I, what we found is that INEC are very much overwhelmed. Um, and then PVCs are ending up in different places that they're not supposed to be. So you're supposed to bring the PVCs in order of where you're registered, in order of wards and everything like that. But we're finding that PVCs are ending up in different in different wards. Someone pockets. registered in Lagos. Someone and registered in Yeah, yeah. PVC. Oh. PVC. They're just very overwhelmed. There's not enough staff. Um, they. They. I mean, some of the PVC um, collection centres that I've been to, maybe they're giving out 20, 25 PVCs a day. Um, they're coming pretty late. They're starting the, the exercise pretty late during the day. So you're starting at 10, 11 when you should be starting by much seven. Earlier. A, much earlier by 7 a.m. in the morning. You don't have enough people there. So there's a real, real um, issue with PVC collection. And honestly, I'm not so confident that INEC are, are going to sort that out between now and the 29th. I'm hoping that they will, but I'm, 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 because the, the complaints of people, people not being able to collect their PVCs have been astounding. They've been a lot. And from our side as well, I've been trying to help so many people collect their PVCs. But it's, it may, maybe I'm getting, if I'm sending, you know, 10 PVCs for collection, right. I'm getting two back. Right. So the, the, the ratio in which the PVCs are coming out are not it's good not very It's not very encouraging. They're not good enough. And you're disenfranchising a lot of new voters. A I'm hoping that we can you know, be able to speak to INEC before the season rounds up to find out what is what being is going done on exactly, and what yeah. is going on. Let's also talk about turnout at the polls. In the last election, in, in 2019, what we saw is that we had um, about 51%, 51.11% of young voters being used. But we then saw that there were about 46% that turned up at the polls. Now, this year, we're seeing that we have uh, about 70.4 uh, million registered voters are young people between the ages of 18 and 49. This is out of the 93.4 million total registered votes. Do you foresee that more people will turn out at the polls? Or do you think that it might be a case of more people getting their PVCs and not turning up? If yes, why? 
Um, I'm hoping that more people are going to turn out this time. Apathy has been our, a, a big problem in this country for a very long time. 2019 figures in terms of electoral turnout was, was very shocking. It was very low. Um, young people have been making a lot of noise leading up to this election, especially if you look back at things that happened during the NSARS and, and the fact that issues haven't been resolved since then. We've kind of carried the NSARS issues into 2022, right. into 2023. So young people have been very vocal in terms of this election. It's actually the most vocal that I've ever heard them. The most so, uh, exciting. The most excited that I've ever yes. heard them as well. So I'm hoping that they can channel that vocality and they can channel all of that energy. And it's not just making sure you come out on election day to vote, but making sure that your vote is counted, making sure that you, you, you wait there throughout the day for as long as it takes to make sure your vote is counted, your vote is casted, and um, the results are pasted, and you are happy with what is pasted on the wall. There's a, there's, it's, it's not about just voting and going. It's about making sure that your vote counts. Um, so, like you said, like I said, apathy has been a, it's been a massive, massive problem. But leading up to the 2023 elections, we've we've heard all of the noises online. We've heard all of the noises offline. We've seen all of the rallies. Yes. We've seen all of the movements. We've seen all of the walks. It's now time to channel all of that energy, all of that protest into power. I like this, that you've mentioned this online noise. Yeah. Because it says that election is not won on social media. But what we've seen is a lot of young people are spreading the message. They spread it through their music. They spread it through their kids. kids. They're starting challenges to sort of create awareness. And that's, that's very exciting. The unfortunate part about that is uh, there are people who, young people who are Nigerians, not living in Nigeria, that have been, you know, they've been restricted, I would say, by, from participating in elections. So talking about young people in the diaspora that want to participate in voting, how important is it for us to achieve diaspora uh, uh, voting? We see that constitution constitutionally. We are not allowed to do that. Mm. Section 77 is up to the Constitution. Mm. But it's hoped, you mm. know, we're hoping that this would be something that would... Now, I make I said they're open to it anyway. So do you think that, um, first of all, how important is it? And if you, if you think it's important, depending when it's achieved, how can young people in the diaspora that cannot vote, how can they be a part of the pro uh, process still? First of all, thank you for that question. Um, first of all, like you said, it's, a con it's, it's in the Constitution. And the first thing we need to do is look at getting like minds into the National Assembly, into the Senate, for us to be able to overturn some of the things in the Constitution that shouldn't be there, or for us to be able to exercise some things from the Constitution that shouldn't be there. Um, so yeah, that, that's the first thing. In terms of diaspora voting, I am not sure our democracy is there yet. There is a lot of um, intricacies, there's a lot of logistics, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things that, that, got, that, that you know, lay around diaspora voting and getting votes from abroad. Are you going to do it online? Are you going to do it by postal? I just don't think our democracy is there yet. But I do think it's something that within the next four to eight years, um, we definitely need to look at how we can, in, how we can input diaspora um, voting into our electoral system. Because the diaspora, they contribute, I think it's about 30 billion a year into the Nigerian economy in terms of things that they send back to their family at home. Um, so yeah, it's very, very important that we start looking at diaspora voting, we start looking at how we can get our citizens abroad to start making, an, uh, start making decisions and start making an impact on our economy at home. Thank you very much, um, Aziz Thank Quadri, you. for joining us to talk about this. There's so many things that so we need many. to explore. <laughs> I'm hoping that we can have you again join us sure. to further delve into this conversation. Thank you. Thank but you now so it's much. time for us to share with you who your candidates are. So let's take a look at knowing your candidates. As we count down to the elections, how many of the candidates do you know? Today is another edition of Know Your Candidate, and we'll bring you another political party, inundating you with all that you need to know about the party, the candidate, and the logo. Now, the party name for today is African Democratic Congress, the ADC. The party logo, as you can see on your screen, is a handshake. Presidential candidate for this party is Kachiku Dumebi, and of course, he was born on the 20th of December, 1970. He's a Nigerian businessman, media mogul, politician, and also the younger brother to a former minister of state for petroleum services, 
Ibe Kachiku. He's a presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress for the 2023 general election. And his manifesto, of course, is, um, is as follows. The presidential candidate of the African Democrat, uh, Democratic Congress, ADC, Dumebi Kachiku, vows to stop public officers and their families from attending foreign schools and hospitals if elected the next president of Nigeria. And to achieve this, he said he would sponsor a bill at the National Assembly that would be known as the Nigerian Patriot Act. Dumebi also pledged to tackle insecurity with modern technologies by recruiting additional one million soldiers into the Nigerian army. According to Dumebi, visionless leadership cannot continue to lead our people astray. We must elevate our millions of farmers to agripreneurs and transition farming to agribusiness. And that's all that you need to know about the presidential candidate of the ADC. This, of course, is our reminder to you to get your PVC. The office of the citizen is the highest office of the land and you cannot sit on the sidelines yet complain that you want a change. Remind you also that we will, of course, be bringing this every day of the week as we count down to elections to inform you about all the details that you need to know about political parties as well as their logo, their candidates and their manifesto. Remember, do not sell your votes. In so doing, you're selling your future. And it will be nice to find out what you think about uh, trying to stop public officers from the, uh, or public officers kids from schooling abroad tweet at us at new central television to let us know what your thoughts are once again thank you very much um, as this quadri for thank joining you. us thank you for having me